in the beginning we were kind of outgunned and outnumbered but we were just in there fighting for our right to exist you know and then as we grew in size in technique in strength you know we started to go after real professional achievements that we're that we're competing for now this is the story of 10th planet jiu-jitsu a radical approach to the art of grappling one that would go on to have a global impact at the heart of this revolution stands one man a visionary, a rebel, and above all, a pioneer who dared to redefine the rules of an age-old martial art. Hello, my name is Eddie Bravo, founder of 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu, a global martial arts association with headquarters based in downtown Los Angeles. What 10th Planet actually means to me is that uh, it's a dedication of individuals who are looking for what is possible and what, uh, what can be done and what works at the highest level, you know? I think the biggest difference between current 10th Planet and early 10th Planet is early 10th Planet was real MMA focused. Like, it was Jiu Jitsu for MMA. Eddie had seen the effectiveness of, you know, early Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in the UFC and then saw it sort of fall off and just hypothesized. It's because they're they're training in the gi, it's different, no gi, train no gi, but it was real fight-centered. So what makes 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu so different? Well, I've taken the science and the concepts of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and infused it with a little evolution. I started by removing the traditional Japanese uniform known as the gi. And then uh, he came back, I think he was gonna call it like Sumerian Jiu-Jitsu or something like that. I forget, because the, the joke was like, back then, Eddie and I would smoke a lot of weed and we would watch documentaries. <laughs> and we would watch, uh, the big one was, uh, we were really into Zechariah Sitchin. The Sumerian text in his interpretation described a planet that came in an elliptical orbit every 3,600 years close to Earth. And that this planet was called Nibiru. And that this planet, that this there's year. these creatures on this planet called the Anunnaki and that human beings were the product of accelerated evolution. So the Anunnaki came down here when we were basically lower primates in the jungle and they experimented with our DNA and turned us into what we are now. So that's why he called it 10th Planet. So I came up with 10th Planet. That's my name. Was he pissed? Because I, I was like, Sumerian Jiu Jitsu, no one's gonna know what that means, man. I go, just call it 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu. Like this shit is so crazy. It's was, from over there. Was he Tenth Planet wasn't really, it wasn't really trying to make waves within the BJJ community as much so as it was trying to be a unique path to making the beautiful art of Jiu Jitsu be something substantial mm -hmm. and actually um, vital to MMA training. That was the whole thing. So when it started becoming more sport Jiu Jitsu and people use it for that, it's like, oh, that's great. But it really, really wasn't the original purpose for it. That was just kind of um, a consequence of the development of so many people adding to the system. What got appealed to me, having come from a Jeet Kune Do background of trying to mix these ideas and concepts, was the fact that it was uh, an aggressive defensive position, right? You get on the ground, you don't just play half guard and wait for something to happen. You play lockdown and you aggressively try to sweep. You don't just lay on your back and take punches, you clinch. You use rubber guard to get back and submit people and really gun toward finishing them. And that for me was the key um, in making 10th Planet unique amongst BJJ systems. It wasn't just a, a worst case scenario per se, but it actually had a path toward victory focused on um, finishing with submission. 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu, everything was about being able to punch, being able to transition from here, being in a position where they can't punch and you can elbow, uh, you know, elbows from, from Chill Dog. Just a lot, of, a lot of stuff about using your guard to immobilize people and strike. And then once EBI sort of came out, then there was a real showcase for submission in Jiu Jitsu and, and the focus switched to that. It's like when you look back at those times, it's an, it was an interesting era. It was an interesting era for us as humans. It was an interesting era for martial arts. There was a lot going on. And that 10th planet was really a, a hub of exciting innovation and still is. But I mean, back then it was this really unique thing, this, this completely 
no-gi branch of jiu-jitsu that's directly connected to Junjok Machado. Um, the biggest moments, you know, in the very beginning um, were people like George Sadaropoulos coming in. When Dan Hardy had the fight with George St. Pierre and our boy Alder, who runs St. Pine Event Nice now, was in his corner with him getting ready for the fight. Like, that was huge, you know? Um, that was the beginning of, of us getting a taste of just how close we are to the very top. Of, of this sport. Um, ben Saunders, of course, probably the most dedicated 10th Planet guy because he actually owns us the gym now um, and, you know, rocking that Oma Plata in the UFC. So um, shout out to Ben Saunders. Coming out here to train with Eddie Bravo definitely comes from uh, my Jeet Kune Do basis. You know, it's, it's all about just expanding your mind, uh, you know, training all different styles, being open-minded. You've accomplished way more than I have. I definitely believe we're both artists in our own way, man. We're, we're both, you know, scientists to the art. And, you know, no one can deny Eddie Bravo's passion for jiu-jitsu. You could, you could sense easily that your passion is there. So I'm like, when you surround yourself with people that are passionate about the same thing and you're into the evolution... For me, it just seemed like a no-brainer, man. They say the guard is dead. They say the guard is there only to get back to your feet. Nobody told Ben Saunders, nobody told Eddie Bravo, and he gets himself to mission control. Well, he climbs up. He's setting up something called the dead orchard position. They say that triangles can only be finished with one arm in and one arm out. Well, nobody told 10th Planet that, because over there, these guys with long limbs are finishing this two-arm in triangle, and now he's got him in a, the position that he wants. This is called New York. New York, and he hugs this leg, traps the whole thing in there. The arm is on the mat, the, the knee is being hugged, the pressure is on there, still has that dead orchard, but as he slips out of the dead orchard, it sets up the Oma Plata position. And this little braid of flesh and bone is a painful one to watch. This is one big battle right in here for this Oma Plata position, and it is pressure on the shoulder right now. Watch that. He just grabs his shin, uses it as a lever, and pulls the extra pressure onto the shoulder right here. This is close. It's already hurting him. Last ditch effort, keep this hip away by posting up on this leg. This baby is done and look what happens right here. He gets a hold of the hand. Eddie told me last night that this is part inverted arm lock, part wrist lock and shoulder lock. It's all bad, baby. It's all bad. And let's all pause right here because there's a myth that the Oma Plata does not work in MMA. And let's just have a moment of silence for that myth as it dies right here, as his hip is on the ground, the Oma Plata is in, and this baby is done. Oma Plata submission, Ben Saunders, welcome back to the UFC, baby. That was thrilling. Way to go, Eddie. Those moments, I think, really put 10P on the map and allowed us to create the first EBI, second EBI, and the submission-only community that, that gained popularity because the UFC was also gaining so much popularity at the same time. Yeah. Somebody who does nogi jujitsu, even if it's not 10th Planet, they're like, oh shit, you train 10th Planet. Like, what's it like? Is Eddie Bravo really that crazy? Like, you know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah, but it's awesome. So I think now people respect it more and they've seen how far 10th Planet competitors have come up and stuff, so. You know, yeah, the, the first UFC, you had Hoist dragging people to the ground and finish them. And I was like, oh, jujitsu. And after a while, people got smart to it. They started to counter wrestle. They started to get their striking together. And they started to realize, shit, it's a little harder. But then if you can't knock them out, first option. If you can't wrestle them down, second option. You have to have a third option. And that was where the jujitsu came in. And what kind of jujitsu? Well, no gi jujitsu specifically. And what kind of no gi jujitsu? Well, this clinch jujitsu that we've been working on for, you know, <laughs> 20 years now. You know? And so putting in all that time, I think really helped for it to, uh, to stand out amongst any other academies and, and really prove to the world that it was something different that was systemized for a particular purpose, not just a couple of flashy moves here and there. Oh, let's call it a different jujitsu system. There was, there was more to it than that. You really need to study um, those positions to appreciate that. Tenth Planet has basically been hit with uh, resistance and controversy ever since the inception. So starting all the way from Eddie defeating Hoyler, right away 
the the media spin cycle went ahead and started saying this was a fluke this was something that could never happen again that eddie was really just some lucky brown belt who caught this legend and this was not a disproving of or approving of eddie bravo's jiu-jitsu over hoyler gracie's jiu-jitsu this was just uh something that happened I mean, that was the year that he tapped out hoyler gracie it was the craziest upset ever wow. it was insane is that insane what, in brazil is that what blew him up 100 percent, man he wasn't even a black belt yet eddie was a brown belt and he tapped out hoys gracie hoyler a oh, hoyler gracie. hoyler who was hoyce's brother who was more successful even than hoyce in jiu-jitsu tournaments He's like one of the greatest Gracies of all time in terms of his uh, his accomplishments in winning world jiu-jitsu tournaments. He was the man. What did he tap him with? A triangle. One of the greatest experiences of my life. I, I, I get emotional right now. For, yeah, because I, I can't even imagine. See, that, that's true. That's real love for your homie. To, <sighs> to For you to get that emotional because he won? It changed his life. Yeah, man. Because I, he was always like this like super talented guy and like... You know, I he and I would talk about it. He would talk about all these jujitsu wizards and all these people that were like like super talented. I go, dude, you're a fucking wizard. Ih, rapaz, agora encaixou, hein? Tem que sair daí, Hoyler. Tem que sair daí. Tá vencendo por Look at him squeezing. Hoyler's fucked, and he's trying to get out here. But Eddie's this is just death. And then Eddie finally grabs the head, and when he grabs the head with the squeeze, Hoyler's tapping, and that's it. And so Eddie walks up, and this is what he said. He said he couldn't believe it. But he walked around with his arms up in the air like he knew it was going to happen. Tendo a luta por seis a dois. Uma surpresa, hein? E o Ona, unbeatable man. He's the legend. I can't believe I won. I can't believe I won. And I'm back to the That was the birth of 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu. And then, then he came back. John Jock Machado gave him his black belt. John Jock took his black belt off. After this match? After that match. And put it on Eddie. So from the very beginning, it was like the, the mainstream opinion of 10th Planet was that it was a system that didn't really have a basis in fact, wasn't really effective, and wouldn't become mainstream and shouldn't be supported, quite frankly. Some of you have been asking me what I think of this 10th Planet jiu-jitsu nonsense. 10th Planet, of course, is a system from California. Uh, it's named after the 10th planet in our solar system. Uranus, which makes sense because this system stinks. Why would I give a fuck about a fake fight right. when I could see real stuff? Why would I give a fuck about a fake jiu-jitsu guy? A fake jiu-jitsu black belt? You have an interview with this guy. We do, we're doing a TV show. I know you do a TV show. And this guy, he's not a real black belt. They listen, do a lot listen, of things, listen. but they don't do jiu-jitsu. They don't do real Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You want to interview a real guy. That's right. Renato Laranja. Right. Have a seat, man. It's all yours. Have a seat. That led to a lot of gyms deciding that the way to handle 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu was to essentially ban it from the academy. So uh, people like myself who remember training at gyms prior to there being uh, 170 10th Planet gyms around the world like there are now, we were training in gyms and we were the 10th Planet guy at that gym. And so everyone else was a classical jiu-jitsu practitioner, and then there was the one or two 10th Planet guys. And instructors would berate you, they would make fun of you. People have been kicked out of gyms literally for using the lockdown. That guy who come to my seminar, he had some shirt, he had some shirt, Edge Bravo. Stand up. Tell me your name. Oh, my name's Adam. Come in, get in front of the class. If you're so smart, why don't you teach? Why don't you tell them something they, they need to know? If that's so smart, that shirt. Anybody can do this. They just have to have an open mind, that's all. And for me, I thought, man, if we're gonna bring jiu-jitsu back, we gotta get rid of the gi, get rid of this old Japanese superhero outfit. A lot of people in the jiu-jitsu community thought that I was turning my back on jiu-jitsu when it was, nothing could be further than the truth. I was doing it for jiu-jitsu. I thought everyone would join me. No gi, jiu-jitsu exclusively, and then the marijuana thing, which, now it seems like not a big deal. Everyone smokes weed and it turns out all of the Brazilians smoke weed too. But at the time, it was like 10th Planet was representing this counter-cultural movement inside of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And that was something that had to be fought. Just like the way the hippies in the 60s were fought. Todd is busy getting into the 10th Planet uniform. And uh, he said he was gonna do something again on the 10th Planet mindset. He must be burning some incense or something. Yeah. 
I'm Eddie Bravo, founder of 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. I'm here helping out the High Rollers Tournament, the grand prize. Uh, used to put, get you put in jail. Now it's a grand prize, a pound of weed. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. There was a, a cultural resistance to 10th Planet, and then there was like a, in the gym, like this is something that's banned that you shouldn't practice because it's not good and it's not gonna work for you. It was created by a guy named Eddie Bravo, who I believe has his own cartoon show. Uh, that's probably why the system is so ridiculous because none of these moves would work anywhere except in a cartoon. We had a chip on our shoulder. Like we had to go prove this every single weekend, um, and the odds were against us. You know, just based on the numbers, that's another thing that's always been a challenge. Tenth Planet's a very small system compared to a lot of the other more uh, traditional Brazilian systems. So we've always been small in numbers, but very enthusiastic. But in order to defeat a Tenth Planeter, uh, you need to get them comfortable in their environment. Okay, party lighting here. Okay, get some music. Okay, now it really feels like a 10th Planet Dojo. 10th Planet was the black sheep of jujitsu in that no one really wanted us there, but we, but there we were, and we were gonna show up and we weren't going away. So when it came to the tournaments, uh, you know, 10th Planet started to really, really aim towards the submission only tournaments or the submission heavy tournaments. That was the way that 10th Planet wanted to go, away from the IBJJF points direction. That was not really our emphasis because we were really interested in the submission only jujitsu game. Um, and so now what I would say is that 10th Planet has actually completely taken over the submission only jujitsu game to the point where when you go to a tournament, sometimes a, a, a majority of the nogi competitors are re either representing a 10th Planet gym directly or representing a 10th Planet style in their, their style of jujitsu. Um, so we kind of went from being the black sheep to being the the mainstream in, in the no-gi jiu-jitsu world. I wasn't planning on doing my own show. I didn't want to, I, w I just wanted, I had this idea, I had this format in my head that I thought could take jiu-jitsu as a sport to the next level, to get it into TV, but no one really wanted to hear, especially the overtime rules that I came up with. They were just too far out. And uh, so eventually, uh, along with my partner, Victor Davila, uh, he, we just decided to do it on our own. I think that when you, when you feel looked down upon by the mainstream of jiu-jitsu or you're not taken seriously, it makes you want to prove everyone wrong. It, it makes you want to really show the world that you belong there. Before 2013, 10th Planet was like eight school, it was like a, it was like a handful of schools. Um, and then after 2013, when Eddie had his match, second match with Hoyler, um, and the world saw another display of high level 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu on display, then the association really started to blow up, like numbers wise. I'm training hard, I'm, I'm already at weight. I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm, my technique is, Way different, way better, way stronger. I'm stronger than I was back then. Crazy veteran, old family first fam. Taught the world to swing that double edged sword, it works, fam. BJJ from GJJ, like who hurt gave birth to what your DJ plays. But despite the lineage, I will never be closed minded. Refuse to see beyond the lines, you go blind. Rocket travels the 10th planet, I flow free. I'm welcome on mini mats, gi to no gi. Though my brand straight is supposed to be original tree. Who sprouted from the that changed everything that made that made us that gave us the ability to do bigger events and so we had more access to more competitors, higher numbers. We got guys like, you know, PJ Barch on the scene, guys that, are, that have a wrestling background that are able to compete, uh, you know, in bigger events, ADCC. We won the quintet, you know, we won uh, Subversive. We won uh, a lot of professional 
we started to stack up some professional accolades as an association because we were drawing on a bigger number of people, you know? So in the beginning, we were kind of outgunned and outnumbered, but we were just in there fighting for our right to exist, you know? And then as we grew in size, in technique, in strength, you know, we started to go after real professional achievements that we're, that we're competing for now. From this singular mind sprang a revolution, techniques so distinct, they altered the very fabric of the grappling arts. Well, Eddie figured out a brilliant thing with rubber guard, when, with a brilliant thing with mission control and how to control from the back of the neck. He utilizing closes leg. the distance. Yeah. Yeah. He closes the distance. He changed a lot of people's games. What, what uh, some people don't want to recognize, but they have to is the idea that he had. And I remember him coming up and trying some of the techniques and people, oh, this is crazy. I said, no, man, keep going. This is, yeah. You're going to get somewhere. And what are you going to show me? I'm going to show you something called the Sorcerer. This is the step one in the main path. Step two, we're in New York. Now we clear the neck, we're in Chill Dog, and then Invisible coll Collar here. Ooh. At Invisible Collar, you can't posture up, you can't pull out, and you can't stack. Yeah, no. This is the ultimate control position. And you could throw some elbows. And most times in the early days, when we're First doing IBJJF worlds, people are trying to do rubber guard, people are just stacking through it, pressure passing, and we're still trying to figure out how to use it. And then people started coming along, um, Boogie, Richie Martinez, and Jill, um, and really started to use their angles and their body mechanics in more fluid ways that made it work. And then eventually you had the Jeremiah Vances and Ben Eddies and Nathan Orchards of recent times, where they're really taking um, a rubber guard to the highest possible level you can. I think the most important part of evolution is that it indicates that there's change over time. And if you get stuck into a rigid way of thinking, there's no room to change and so no evolution can take place. And if you've got something great, that's not so bad. You know, we got something that's functional, we got something that works, we got something that's really good. Why change? But if you're not satisfied, or if you just want to see what else is possible, you have to be willing to question the things that you believe. You gotta be willing to at least sit and ask questions about your basic assumptions. I did this to focus on developing a jujitsu style based on clinching your opponent rather than yanking and pulling on your opponent's gi, which I feel was taking the art into an unrealistic tug of war dimension. For two decades, 10th Planet has dared to be different. It has redefined the boundaries of grappling. It's given us an arsenal of unconventional techniques, a philosophy that encourages ingenuity, and a competitive spirit that thrives under pressure. But the 10th Planet story is far from over. Our mats will continue to be a crucible for innovation, a platform for competition, and a home for those who seek to challenge themselves. We believe that the greatest victories lie not in mastering the opponent, but in mastering oneself. As we look to the future, we do so with a sense of anticipation and excitement. The next chapter of 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu awaits us, ready to be written by those brave enough to step on the mat, to question the conventional, to strive, to endure, and evolve.